Today on the Point Blank Performance YouTube channel, we've got a 2019 Limited Longhorn 5th Gen Dodge Cummins with a 4th Gen engine installed. On the outside of this build, it's going to feature all the PVP goodies, but we're focused underneath the hood. That's right. It's got a 467 2nd Gen Swap Turbo Kit. It's got an intake horn and our custom radiator pipe. Guys, will a 4th Gen engine work in place of a 5th Gen? Yes, it sits in there. We're good there. Number two, if it could work and will work, what parts have to be changed so the factory computer will be happy? It's a good question. The third and final thing, did the customer just take a $90,000 truck and take a step backwards? Or did the customer install an engine that's gonna take his $90,000 truck and go to the next level? That's right, we've got a fifth gen truck with a fourth gen engine in its place. Now I know what you're thinking, if you had an engine failure as this customer did with a factory engine, you would just go to the dealership and buy an engine. Guys, they are crazy high. So he had an unfortunate event, but fortunately for him, he had a backup engine and it's a fourth gen series. So it's in its place. Taking a first look at it, you're going, hey, there's no difference. It's an inline six, the turbo fits on there. You've got all the accessories, everything's good to go, wired up, it's out the door. It didn't go that simple. So with this build, the computer is not happy. What's our problem? We have a cam crank correlation. You see my hands? They're timed, right? They're equal. Well, inside this engine, the computer says, you are not timed and I'm not going to let you run correctly. Engine code, we got to fix it. All right. So everything runs off of sensors. This is a crank sensor here. I just pulled that out of the timing cover. There's the magic word we're all looking for. This timing cover here hosts the cam and crank sensors. We've got to get the front cover off. We've got to pull the cam out of there and we've got to put the correct one in. That's right. We're going to pull the fourth gen cam out that's in there. We're going to grab the fifth gen cam, put it back in there. The computer's going to be happy. If you know us, we're not just going to put the factory camshaft in. We're going to be upgrading. Let's go to the table and check out the camshaft. So we've got three parts on the table that stand in our way of finishing that limited Longhorn 5th Gen build. What are they? We've got our timing cover for the 5th Gen. We've got our sensors, cam crank, and our camshaft. We're focused on the sensors first. We've got our camshaft sensor and our crankshaft sensor. These are for the 5th Gen. They are noticeably smaller. They go in the front cover here. That problem will be fixed because if you try to take the 4th Gen sensor, and plug it in, you can see it just will not fix. So when this cover is installed on that fourth gen engine, it will bolt right up. It's the same bolt pattern. You have to use the fifth gen sensors. Problem's done. But I create a problem when I do that. You're staring right at it. See this gear here on the front? That gear drives the high pressure fuel pump. And you guessed it, we've got a CP4.2 pump on the back. Nobody in their right mind is going to put this pump back on that truck. We're upgrading to a CP3 pump. He had a 12 millimeter pump. But we got to make for sure this, that it's a high speed unit. So we've now got an advantage over the truck. High speed, why? Because it's going to be overdriven. This is a smaller gear. So now we're going to take the capabilities of a 12 millimeter pump that usually spins this fast and now it's going like this. So we got a shitload of fuel to use for this build. So that's perfect. So just keep in mind, when you swap this front cover and you go to this small gear, make for sure your CP3 pump is adequate for the speed that it will be doing. Now, here's the one sensor that's standing in my way. So why is this camshaft sensor standing in our way? Well, it's all about timing. The engine is nothing but a big clock, and everything's got to be timed. First off, what's a camshaft look like? Well, you're in luck. This is a camshaft. This is a camshaft gear. It rides on the front. Guess what? What does the camshaft sensor do? It reads the gear. It's a magnet as well. So therefore, as this spins, it's giving back information to the computer, and it says, I see you, then I don't. I see you, then I don't. This is a correct sensor for the camshaft gear, but inside that fourth gen engine, we have a different sensor and we have a different camshaft gear. It's giving information back to the computer and the computer says, that's not what I'm programmed to do, so now check engine light. 
cam crank correlation it doesn't know where it's at so when we put this in with the correct sensor we're going to be back on track now guys if you know us and you know this it's a lot of work to get in there to change out a camshaft we're not going to go back with the factory one no sir we're going to be upgrading to a hamilton camshaft first and foremost keep in mind we got a fourth gen engine and a fifth gen truck that means do not buy a fifth gen camshaft like this one what are the difference the difference is this take a look at the lobes a roller lifter just like you ls guys rides on this lobe that's the new fifth gen series we're going back to the fourth gen the robust the better stuff right all right what do we got here we've got a hamilton camshaft for the fourth gen engine it's a tappet series camshaft there's a tappet that rides here how big a camshaft did you go tyson a 178 208 camshaft tyson don't you like that 188 220 camshaft these are all just numbers to you but guys i'm going up and i'm going down this is a 178 208 a smaller camshaft for a smaller turbocharger that means they're paired up we want to keep air inside the cylinder sooner instead of having these big lobes on there yes that camshaft would do better way up here but drive like shit down low we want to keep it driving good down low spool that charger up and make power so that's the reason why we went with a 178 208 hamilton camshaft now guys we got a lot of parts on the table we got a work cut out for us let's get this fifth gen truck where it will now accept a fourth gen series engine. So our fifth gen powered by our C3 HB package is singing its ass off with that 67 millimeter turbocharger. It sounds good, it's making power, but is it actually making power? That's something we have to make for sure and watch as we're doing a dyno, because if not, we're just spinning the tires and hearing the turbocharger sing and putting numbers on the board. What did this truck end up making? So we made 407 rural horsepower and 822 feet pound of torque. That's not very good numbers for what's been done to the truck, but what took place? Well, now we look at the dyno graph. I stopped this run at 2800. I signal fill, said stop, this damn thing ain't gonna make any more power because there is an issue. We made our peak horsepower, peak torque at 2500 RPMs and 2600 RPMs. We should have made it all the way over here to 3000. Now let's take a look at the graph. Go to engine speed. Okay, 2200. Got the truck rolling, hit it, boom, we're making power. Fuel pressure's up, I'm liking what I'm seeing on the EasyLink data. But we get to 2600 and this thing starts to dive off. This is only a three second run. This is about one second after I let out of the truck, we're done, fuel pressure takes a nose dive and we need to call it. So now to make it make sense for you guys, I wanna show you the EasyLink data of what we're commanding, what Tyson needs to make power, but actually what the truck's laying down. So what's the big deal about fuel pressure? Well, first off, what does this truck have underneath it supplying the high pressure pump? It's powered by our stage one low pressure system, our baby Pac-Man, our fast 165, and a fuel filter to leak. Now down to business. We're on the dyno and we're commanding 
29,000 pounds of pressure. You can see that here in our EasyLink data. 29,000 pounds of pressure, but we're actually putting down 17,000. That means we're roughly 12,000 pounds of pressure less. So to get over that 500 horsepower, we're gonna need all that damn fuel pressure because this is a big truck with some big 35s on it and we need it to send it over. Just because the turbocharger's singing and it sounds good, don't mean shit. If we do not have fuel pressure, we will not make power. Now, just because there's a fourth gen engine swapped in it, does it have anything to do with this truck not maintaining high pressure fuel? So can you swap a fourth gen engine into a fifth gen truck? And the answer is yes, you can. But by doing that, does that cause a fuel pressure issue? And no, it does not. This is just part of having a fifth gen truck. They've got a CMF controller, that's the ECM name. They've got bigger injectors than the fourth gens, and they do have a different pump. It is overdriven. By swapping all that, we've got to get the electronics and the hard parts talking together. So therefore, when the 67 millimeter turbocharger's singing on the dyno, we've got fuel pressure and we've got power. Today's video is just focused on you guys seeing that you can, if you've got a question about it, swap your fourth gen into your fifth gen truck. But the next time you guys tune in with us and see this truck, it is powered by our C3 HP package. It's got a bigger cam in it, 67 millimeter turbocharger. We're gonna answer the question, is a fourth gen engine superior over a fifth gen with the same mods and the same parts? Can we make more power? I wanna know it, you wanna know it. Like, subscribe to YouTube channel. We'll see you back here next time at Point Blank Performance.